Morning, everybody. <clears throat> Let me pray for us as we begin today. <clears throat> I, um, in particular, I want to pray for uh, in Chicago right now. If you're joining from Chicago, it is extremely cold this weekend. And so I want to begin by praying um, for our neighbors who do not have homes right now. God, we ask that you would care for those uh, that our, our systems and institutions miss and that you would inspire us in this community and those uh, that feel moved and convicted um, to fill in where institutions and systems fail many. We pray that you would move all those that follow you to fill those gaps. And you are the God that can hold our own personal burdens, but never at the expense of the burdens of others. It feels impossible to do that. Like, we'll, 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 on our own, we will inevitably pit burdens against each other. But you are the God who can hold all burdens. You are the God that can teach us to, to never hold our own at the expense of another's. And so I ask that you would inspire us, convict us to be a light and to be a help to those who are especially affected by the extremely cold temperatures. And we do pray for our systems, that they would become more just and that less people would fall through the cracks. Make us agents of joyful rebellion, called to resist sullen empires of fear, fueled not by hatred but love for all people. We stand united, assured you are here. Verses 
We stand united, your justice alive.
I want to take a moment and do a little bit of a guided meditation, guided prayer for a moment. So um, <clears throat> if you can find yourself in as comfortable a position as you can, and if you have control over uh, the amount of quiet in your uh, uh, surroundings right now, I would encourage you to kind of, you know, make it as quiet and prayerful a space as possible. We're going to take some deep breaths together. Inhale, exhale. Following your breath is sort of a a, a, a constant in meditation practices. So we're going to do that a few times together. And as we do, uh, what we're going to try to do is focus internally. Sometimes when you're following your breath, the idea is to kind of like you follow almost like your, uh, the, your mind's eyes following your breath go in so you can see more internally what's going on. And then maybe you're breathing out anything that might kind of take your focus away. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to focus on the bit of God that lives internally in us. So Jesus said, we're not left alone as orphans. God comes to us. God is not distant. God is not up in the clouds or on a mountain that we have to go find. God's spirit lives within each of us. And so we're going to try to focus our attention on that. We're going to try to find, maybe you can recognize it by that force of compassion or grace or love that competes with the forces of despair or frustration or petty grievance or maybe very legitimate grievance that kind of crowds our 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 our, our space uh, in our mind we're looking for that force of love we're looking for that force of compassion that sometimes fights that that's where we will we'll find god's spirit and in this uh as as i'll remind us with any mindfulness practice Getting distracted does not mean you are failing at it. So just remember that. Uh, actually noticing that you're distracted and then gently returning yourself to focus is meditation. It is mindfulness. You're actually doing it when you notice you're distracted. So that's a good thing. So every time we, we notice and we gently return ourselves, we don't shame ourselves to return ourselves. We gently return ourselves. Every time we do that, it's like a spiritual rep for our muscles, so that's what we're going to do. No shaming ourselves aloud. Every time we notice we're distracted, we just come back to focusing internally. All right. Let me lead us in some inhales and exhales as you search for focusing on God inside you. We'll breathe in. And out. Deep breath in, see how long you can hold it at the top. And out. Another deep breath in as you follow your focus inward, finding God's spirit inside you. Deep breath in. And out. And we're going to do one more together. Deep breath in. Bring your worry, grief, and pain, every cause you have for shame, lay it all down. 
lay it all down when your cares have buried you and there's nothing left to do lay it all down lay it all down at the feet of jesus at the feet of jesus carried on but your heart was tired feared the worst and felt the fire Lay it all down Lay it all down Filled with all those anxious thoughts Know your doubts became your God Lay it all down Lay it all down At the feet of Jesus Lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down. 
lay it all down 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 at the feet of jesus at the feet of Joyful, joyful, Lord, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness. Drive the dark of doubt away And give her of immortal gladness Fill us with the light of day Fill us with the light of day Fill us with the light of day Fill us with the light of day. Fill us with the light of Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is L'Oreal. I'm the communications intern for Brown Line Church. If you guys don't know me, um, let me get the light right. Um, so this morning, I'm going to open up, op open us up in the word of prayer for in preparation of the word today, just to get our hearts open to receive the message about the power of creativity today, which I'm actually really excited about. Um, and I wanted to bring up the point because we all are actually made in the image of God. So this is a trait that all of us possess in some way. 
And so when we are aware of that and you know, we know that we're able to steward our gifts to help ourselves and to help others in hard times during the long winter months like we're dealing with now and dealing with COVID-19. So I wanna pray that prayer for us this morning and just open our hearts to get ready for that. Lord, thank you for creation itself and the incredible gifts and talents you so generously entrust to us. May we appreciate and develop these talents, always recognizing that they come from your image and remain yours. Guide us in using them for the benefit of everyone that we encounter so that they may be more aware of your creative presence and develop the creativity entrusted to them for the good of others. Help us also to use our talents to bring a creative spark and new possibilities to your world. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, L'Oreal. It's so awesome to have you um, leading us in prayer this morning. And uh, just so excited to have you aboard in the team. It's so great. Um, but I want to say hello to you all on this chilly morning. Uh, my name is Jen. I'm a stakeholder, Jen Colburn. I'm a stakeholder here at uh, Brown Line. And hope uh, the music helped you and the prayer, awesome prayer by L'Oreal, um, are making you feel nice and connected and grounded here this morning. Uh, that joyful, joyful was awesome. So thank you, Vince, for that. I was, I was loving that one. And the harmonica was great. So I think I think we're all getting in that space and that's awesome. Um, Brown Line Church is both an online and local community. We're based in Chicago, but um, in these times we have drawn many beyond Chicago um, and we're leaning into it. It's really, really cool. Um, so this church is a, a place for people to grow spiritually, um, in particular for people who um, maybe feel more comfortable in progressive settings um, or secular settings rather than religious settings people who didn't grow up in a religious environment or um, people who have chosen to leave a religious environment. Um, my husband and myself have uh, our own experiences there. I never grew up in faith. Um, so I'm kind of have that outsider perspective and he's someone who had sort of a uh, charismatic, you know, evangelical uh, um, perspective. So um, we all come together with those different perspectives um, with our guide here as Jesus. Um, there are other religious settings that present faith in Jesus as an exclusive boundary drawing thing, but our experience here is totally different. We see Jesus and spiritual growth uh, grounded in the biblical tradition makes us more inclusive um, and never more closed off. And we're making more seats at the table um, rather than uh, shutting people out. Um, so I will be um, your friendly moderator for today. So I will be hanging out in the chat if you wanna say hello or make a comment. Um, I'm really excited for this discussion on creativity. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, and just to get the conversation flowing this morning, uh, my prompt will be, uh, you know, given it's, it is, a, is it the Super Bowl? Is it the Super Bowl? I don't do sports, but if it isn't, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I obviously don't do sports. Uh, but uh, what's your favorite Super Bowl snack? Like, do you do a dip? You know, what's your what's your favorite Super Bowl snack? I notice I ask a lot of food questions, so um, you know what's on my mind. Anyway, um, uh, so we're in the middle of a series this Sunday. Um, on Sundays are called Spiritual Practices for Winter Survival, and uh, to continue that for us this morning, I'm going to hand it over to our co-pastor Kyle Hanawalt. So I'm going to. Bump it over to you, Kyle. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate it a lot. Um, I'm a little bit ironic that I am bringing our conversation to the table today. Um, we, we have been talking a lot about the things that we do, the spiritual practices that can sustain us through this winter, most literally in terms of how freezing it is outside, but also uh, this winter of kind of this, this stretch of the quarantine, this stretch of life right now that feels uh, hard, feels like it is full of challenge. Um, and this week, I want to I talk about something that I think is incredibly helpful and incredibly important, and it is the spiritual practice of creating. Uh, it's ironic that I'm leading this conversation because I'm not sure anybody would describe me as a creative type. Uh, I have never been asked to sing along with the music here. Uh, I cannot really draw very well. I'm, I'm not what you would call a traditional creative type. However, for me, 
it has been the small acts of creating that have made such a big difference. It has made a really big difference for me uh, in this season. The, the truth is, as I, L'Oreal said so helpfully as we started, there is something powerful, I believe, and has lived out through the church tradition of the creature, us being creators, connecting with the creator. Uh, as I was preparing for this, I was doing some reading and I came across a series of reflections that were out of a Yale Divinity School talking to various people connected to uh, arts and creation and music there, uh, reflecting on this very point of how God exists and breathes life to us through the act of creating. And uh, Meredith Jane Day, who is a musician of herself, uh, was saying when humans as creations of God create or encounter the created creativity of others, something holy and full circle happens. Creators, creation becomes creators. And in this, we experience the divine spark of the God whose image we bear. You know, I think in seasons like this, where it feels like uh, life is really hard, life feels like it has lots of need in it, there can be a tendency to look at the things we uh, consider creativity as an extra thing, uh, an unnecessary part of our life. It, it's not uh, lived out of our need. I actually think that that is actually quite untrue. Uh, in the same series of reflections, John Seal says, my art is not my distraction or an entertainment. It is my way through. And I think that is a deeply helpful piece for us to think about here, that the moments that we create, whether it be through art or music or through cooking or for myself, things as simple as creating obstacle courses for my kids to do. It is in those small moments that I think we are not just distracting ourselves from our struggle, but we are connecting with something that we cannot always name this piece of us that is connected with the divine. Um, as I think about how this all does play out, I think there's, there's a piece in here that I think I really want to encourage us before I invite in some of my other friends here that are going to talk to us about creativity. The piece of this is I would love for us to see not only how our acts of creation, uh, whether it is music or cooking or whatever it is, are deeply spiritual. They are deeply connected with God. And this has been borne out uh, through millennia of people pursuing Jesus, finding life through art, life through creation. And I think the point of this is, is it's not actually about what we're creating, it is the act. In the same series of reflections, Jeremy Hamilton said, uh, ultimately I see the divine most clearly, not in the works themselves, but in the budding curiosity and unfurling excitement that occurs in the act of creating. And I think we need that. We need hope. We need moments that feel like they break through. And, and the last piece of this reflection I want to bring up was from uh, a musician, Megan Mitchell, talking about how beauty of creating helps her believe the divine good does prevail that in a world full of darkness and brokenness, in a world where we feel aware of challenge, when we create something, in that process, it helps us see that there is good, that there's a connection to hope. And in a small way, I can say for myself, even in those small moments of successfully creating an obstacle course for my kids, in that space, I feel hope. It feels like there is good that breaks through this world. It is not just heavy. It is not just hard. But to help us step into this, because I myself am a very uh, singular person. I am who I am. I bring in my own lenses, my own experiences, my own lack of talents to the table. And so what it looks like for me to step into this is not the same for what it looks like for all of us to step into this. So to help us imagine, to help us consider where creativity might help us, where practicing the art of creation as a spiritual practice might help us. I've invited a few friends that I'm pretty excited to talk about. Um, and my first friend that I'd like to invite in is Rebecca Janvrin. Hi, Rebecca. Rebecca hey. is, 
it, it, she would definitely, uh, unlike me, I would say, fit the bill of somebody you would talk to about creativity. Uh, somebody that I think, even though all of the ways that I know her, it just kind of breeds and absolutely exudes a creative uh, heart. And so, Rebecca, I would love just to bring you into the conversation and help us reflect together. For you, what has creativity looked like in this season? Um, creativity has definitely been what I would say my survival. I, um, I, I mean, for most of my life, I uh, would say that to, like, to have a day where I don't have a single creative impulse would be a very strange and rare day. Um, and in terms of what's getting me through quarantine is just like following those impulses wherever they lead. And like, they've led me into some interesting directions. I started writing fiction again. Um, I have been uh, beefing up my notebook of chords for my ukulele. I have been um, uh, experimenting a little bit in the kitchen, but that's not really my area. <laughs> just sort of like anything and everything that I want to follow, um, any creative impulse that I want to follow, I've found that it's very life-giving for me to at least try, you know, and just basically chasing as much non-judgment as possible while I explore new creative spaces. I love that. I think it's it's seeing wherever, I was just thinking about this here. I think a lot of this conversation for me is getting uh, more creative in terms of what I consider creative. And I've started, as I said here, I just like doodle and draw and little thing and just not, not just calling that doodling and drawing, but seeing that as a pursuit of opening myself up to where creativity lives all around me. I, I like that a lot. Um, and one thing to invite everybody here, one thing I'd love to invite into the chat is if you, as we're talking, have things come to your mind, because I think a big piece of this is what Rebecca is saying here, is helping us see where all the possibilities of creativity in life exist. So if you have been doing something that has felt creative and helpful, please share that in the chat and we'll have uh, Jen at the end kind of help us loop that in to help spark all of our imaginations. Uh, Rebecca, I'm curious, do you have anything uh, anything in specific that you feel like you have step, stepped into and leaned into this last season uh, that has really brought life to you in terms of creating? Has really kind of uh, anything particular out of all those things that sticks out to you? Absolutely. Um, this is going to out me as the huge nerd that I am. But um, I have been DMing, which is short for Dungeon Master, or game. I'm the Game Master for a D&D campaign that I started in a world that I created. Um, and so I actually, I think I sent you the map. Yes, the map. we have an image of this, if Trey, you don't mind pulling this up for us all to see. I made this world. <laughs> Um, basically, I mean, it actually started very simple. I had grid paper. I, uh, it's a game where you use dice um, in order to uh, decide outcomes for things. So I just rolled dice at grid paper and I drew around it. And then I was like, okay, that gives me sort of a bigger continent and a series of small islands. All right, let's figure out why those islands are there. Let's figure out why that continent's there. And then I rolled more dice for the mountain ranges. And then I rolled more dice for the lakes. And then in, from there, I was just like, okay, let's put in some forests. Let's put in some towns. Let's decide where the boundaries of countries are. And then I just basically started walking myself through like, okay, if this country exists on the coast, they probably have a lot of fishing. They probably are kind of, maybe some aquatic species live there, stuff like that. Um, just doing some justifications. Um, there's really like no wrong way to go about it. Although I will say when you're creating a fantasy world, if you don't have a secret island where, somewhere where there are pirates, you are doing it wrong. That is the one rule. Um, so there definitely have to be pirates. <laughs> But basically just like, it was really fun. Um, I've, I've had this campaign going now for a couple months and just really fun working backwards from like, okay, if this is the land I'm working with, why is it that way? Um, what What is gonna be fun for the people that I invite to play in this world in terms of like, guess what? There's a secret island where there's pirates. There is a volcanic lake in the mountains. There's like, you know, different like things they can discover, adventures they can go on and places for cool things to happen. That just like, that makes the world real for my players and really fun and engaging as well. I love that. You know, the thing that I was thinking about here is I, I think nerdery may be like a pathway to the Holy Spirit for all of us. Cause like, what does it mean to be nerdy about something? It's to care a little bit 
too much maybe it's to get really involved in something that the whole world around you hasn't told you you should be involved in and i think it's like this real sense of opening yourself up to let your imagination to let your your creative spirit and I, there really is to me a connectivity between experiencing the creator whose image we bear and our own creative imagination and honestly even if it's like diving into like like science and nerds and fantasy and all those things to me it feels like honestly as much as reading a book of theology should be about the divine i am often struggling to find myself experience the divine as i read that however give me lord of the rings and god will show up in that reading i think that this is true i think maybe i need to think about the the holy spirit manifest through nerdery um i love that a lot uh, before before uh we we say thank you and and talk to our next friend Rebecca I'm just curious uh, for you if you can describe a little bit of, of what it feels like when you're creating something like what is that experience um, and what does that do for you internally as you're as you're sitting there and creating your D&D maps or in uh, people may not know uh, Rebecca be when these things happened in person uh, would act uh, is very talented has a musical talent as well but just in whether it's this specific thing or other areas what do you feel like comes alive in you as this is happening yeah um, I always definitely try to start out by chasing the joy so whatever, um, whatever I, I'm creating, I mean, if I, if I start out knowing it's going to be a slog and I'm going to hate it, there's no point to start, right? Um, so I always start out by chasing the joy, chasing the, the fun in it. Um, and then I also try to give myself goals that are realistic. Um, obviously, part of creating has to be judgment of your own work at some places. You have to sort of at some point look back and make decisions about like, this is good, this could be better. I like this, I don't like this, that sort of thing. But you wanna to try to be as kind and forgiving to yourself as possible um, in that process and give yourself a little bit like, you know what? I don't know if I love this, but I worked really hard on it. So I'm really proud of how hard I worked. And even if I don't ever show this to anyone, guess what? I learned, I failed better. You know, I, I learned how to fail upwards <laughs> on this one, whether that's, you know, any sort of creative enterprise. And so just that's sort of where God shows up for me is when I sit back and I look at something that I've made and I'm really genuinely proud of it, that I like sort of feel like, oh, this is me sort of celebrating this gift that God gave me of being able to create like he does. And that feels really fantastic and really kind of like a version of praise. You know, it feels like an absolute version of praise. Like, thank you for letting me use these gifts that you gave me. I love that. It's we we are we are praising God through the act of uh, appreciating our own talents. And I love the idea of judgment. It's almost like, uh, how do we learn how to be do judgment without the shame? Like, how do we just sit there? And because honestly, throughout our life, we need the ability to look back and assess what's going on. But how do we learn how to do that, knowing that we're loved and accepted, and that by judging this thing that we did, it still has value, and we're not carrying the shame with it. So. Uh, Rebecca, so helpful. I really, do, as somebody who is not creative, uh, I, I find your creative inspiration uh, really helpful for me to to step into, even in this act, seeing the different areas of nerdery in my own life as an act of potential creation. So thank you so much, Rebecca. My pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. I would now like to, to introduce our, our second conversation partner today, Isaac Taylor. Hello, Isaac. Hello. I how was San? How was San Francisco? Um, it, it's great. I'm so I'm not in San Francisco right now. I'm technically in. Um, I'm technically in my car. Um, I've huh? <laughs> without talking too much. I guess like one um, one avenue of creativity has been um, uh, converting this into a camper van kind of vehicle. Awesome. Um, so I'm actually in a Panera parking lot in Florida right. Oh um, my goodness, Isaac, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, any, anyway, though, uh, don't want to get like too much into that or, you know, a tour or whatever. Um, one of the things um, that I've brought along with me anyway, though, is um, my bass guitar and also like an acoustic guitar and a bass amp. I have a solar setup and battery anyway. So like I'm able to be like off grid and, and travel. And um, what creativity... I guess either like I, I studied engineering, I also like 
play play music i kind of view it as problem solving anyway it's like mm. what it comes down to and that's something that i really love doing and and um and yeah is being able to find problems to solve with that um i guess i've kind of been able to break it into like two things of just kind of like collaboration but also like mission um and so i like to be able to help others and and work with others and jam with others um oh, yeah. and i know vince definitely feels that anyway um playing live music with other people is something that you can kind of fix problems together you know and and work together and collaborate uh and be on musically and rhythmically on the same uh, on the same page, um, and and being able to add on to what others uh, have made. Actually, it kind of reminds me. I I did I took a little bit of improv uh, it, in Chicago like a couple years ago at uh, the I O Theater. I took musical improv. What more? Um, so it actually, it's like you made a musical like Broadway style, but you improvised it. You know, and somebody would be playing piano off to the side. I took some lessons on how to do that too. So you're improvising music, but also a scene Broadway style. Um, and maybe somebody singing and just has learned a whole lot of musicals beforehand and can just um, extract those core elements, um, make it their own and almost make it like a satire of sorts. Like, you know, there's sometimes like um, improvised Shakespeare for example, um, when they're uh, like they've studied so much of Shakespeare, they have the rhythm and they have the the format, you know, so while there might be certain motifs like a hero's journey, like Shakespeare kind of has its main like rises and falls and they can collaborate in real time without communicating backstage or whatever, for the most part, um, and be on the same page collaboratively. Um, so I didn't, I didn't have that in my notes, but improv is incredibly creative, solving a problem together and collaborative in that you're always trying to yes and honoring what people have already done and try to build on and make it something unique and something uh, cool. Um, can be that way with memes too, I think, um, in many ways, just taking art and adding something more. I love that. I, I think that there's a there, there's a sense of like b building off of things with each other. You know, I think in in everyday life, sometimes it it can feel like uh, we're kind of just going at it by ourselves. Like you're doing your tasks, you're doing your jobs, but there's something about creativity that does invite collaboration. It invites a sense of connection with other people, which to me again speaks to how being creative, stepping into these things connects us with God, who I think lives and exists in community, in relationship. Um, and so I love how, how you talk and describe how, how it's like this, this, this experience of, it's not always about uh, just planning it out and executing your piece. It's about actually dynamic uh, collaboration, dynamic building with other people. Um, and as somebody who is not musically talented myself, um, I think I've seen people around me who do play music. Um, there's a sense of, I think, awareness for them of the need to kind of get out of themselves. Like there's a sense of like, I, like um, yeah, I, Vince is probably my closest friend who is very much into music. And I think there's a, a level of depth and um, uh, openness and connection to what's going on in the world that is not because he's a musician, it's but because you are a musician, you've developed this practice of over and over again of what music does to you, which then I think makes you more sensitive to that in other spaces in life as well. Um, I'm just curious, can you talk a little bit to me? I know you've shared in different places about specifically how, how meaningful playing music has been for you in feeling like in this community of love from God. Um, and just, can you tell me a little bit about uh, the role music in particular has played in a sense of connection and awareness and and love that uh, experienced from God. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, I mean, I I come from like a charismatic experience. Um, I went to Bible school. I also went to like a very like neo charismatic Toronto Blessing kind of church and so on. And I. Man, um, 
there's that's like a it's like a whole nother conversation i guess in a way but i i kind of viewed in some in some contexts anyway when i was playing bass um and was playing worship i kind of viewed it in terms of spiritual warfare while i was playing so you know like praying basically for somebody to be healed out in the audience while i'm like rocking out on the bass kind of thing um and also kind of being a leader on stage and recognizing like you're setting the tone and you're setting the culture for how somebody might um feel engaged and hopefully you know that um and hopefully maybe that'll break some fear over somebody you know if if they're being af afraid of like letting themselves go um you know whether in a worship context or outside of that like you can help model that and you can also play musically and kind of and um and and just kind of add an extra color to it um yeah i i know uh yeah i can also talk a bit about just the importance of like the mission of um of what i'm doing and or or what could be done so i've been here on the road um and actually yeah so i've been here on the road and uh q christian fellowship uh they're kind of like one of the main nonprofits out there um for queer christians so lgbt plus community um progressive christianity they're they're like one of the nonprofits out there um and they had a conference a couple of years ago in, in um chicago and it was super impactful for me to be able to like hear some of the songs that i heard heard some of the worship that I had, I had heard, um, but like openly gay people were doing it on stage, singing like some International House of Prayer songs or like some, some songs from organizations that weren't affirming. And so to be able to be there and to feel God's presence in the same way, while like we are at a like, it's on the brochure, a queer Christian conference, that was something that wasn't, and is incredibly powerful um, from my experience to be able to feel God's presence when most of the time, like I've been told like the Holy Spirit would leave you and forsake you basically, like the cloud would lift was the thought. Anyway, if you, um, if you embraced your sexuality uh, and, and for that to not be the case um, was just incredibly powerful. So while I've been in this, while I've been traveling anyway, they've had like a virtual conference. And so it was um, uh, it was nice to be able to anyway, to add uh, some musical parts, bass guitar, acoustic guitar, um, and kind of send those tracks out. It was kind of a bit weird to have like a cactus in the background and then have Isaac, Chicago, Illinois in the right hand corner. I definitely had a lot of questions about that. Um, but that's something that's been, um, been very special for me and also for uh um affirming worship which was a um was a uh worship night a monthly worship night at a gay bar in andersonville um at atmosphere bar um that that we had like every second tuesday until until COVID happened um and being able to be a part of that jamming with other musicians also like i'm you know trying to get the, all the social media together just got a TikTok. um just to kind of sort of spread that, like the good news, I guess, in a way that um, that God still loves gay people and that worship isn't something that's, um, that's exclusive and closed off to us anyway. Uh, Isaac, thank you so much for sharing that. I think that there's so many powerful points in there. And I think that, I think what there's a reason why music and faith have the like, from from David's Psalms through what we're singing here today with Vince, there's like a real, I think, ability for us to step out of our own way that music provides. And I think to hear and have you talk about the the kind of affirmation of even stepping into things that are connected to rejection and oppression and kind of reclaiming them in, in the in the spirit uh, of God is just an incredibly powerful thing. Um, and as I, you know, I think about music as somebody who doesn't play an instrument, um, doesn't sing in ways that other people want me to, um, and but I, I still think that 
music is one of those things that is, that breeds creativity within us, even if we are not music creators. I think like when I think about the process of of finding new music, this process of figuring out what music is meeting me in different places, uh, that is that invites us to wrestle with things within ourselves and to pursue and open up things inside of ourselves that we just don't encounter in our daily life in the same way without assistance. Um, so. Uh, Isaac, just even beyond our conversation today, just so appreciate all of your thoughts and perspectives and your heart and, and everything in this. So thank you so much for, for joining us for part of the conversation today. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you, Isaac. Well, I'm inviting one more person to chat with us today, uh, Maria Santion. Hello, Maria. Hey, Kyle. Hi, how are you? I got to say, um, one thing that I've heard across the board from tons of different people in COVID is one of the things that they have gotten into that has really helped out in, in the midst of all of this challenge has been cooking, something that I believe to be a deeply creative process. I, I'm you who lead our cooking group um, and have really seems to kind of be at the forefront of some of those experiences this year. I'm curious, could you just tell us a little bit for yourself how creativity has helped you in the season and where cooking played a part in that or any, anything else? Yeah, thanks. Um, I think I'll, I'll be on the same side with you, Kyle. I don't consider myself a creative person at all. Um, I think I'm more of a supporter or enabler of creative people. <laughs> I, so for me, when, when you reached out, I, I didn't think that cooking, like at least what I was doing <laughs> was very creative. Um, but it, I, so I thought about it in a different way. I thought it was more of the uh, creating a, um, creating a space and the space was the, the connection. So um, I you know, ended up reaching out because I was missing out on familial you know, settings of having a meal with my family for birthdays and holidays. Um, and the, some of the same recipes that I love from you know, my mom, my dad, I wasn't able to get because I live by myself. So uh, um, started the, the cooking group as a way to share um, the recipes that I was learning from them over FaceTime, uh, but to kind of bring some of that, that positivity or some of those memories back of being in a setting where you could just hang out and have, you know, have a meal together. You can have a, you know, have a drink together. Um, and so even if it's virtual, that, that I think that's what ended up happening was the creation of this space. Yeah, no, I love that. I think this idea of, uh, creativity being even born in, uh, I think one thing we've all had to be creative in quarantine, that there's not a single one of us that has not had to figure out how to be creative to get something done because how we did everything in the past is now different. Um, and I love this idea. And this is, I think a big thing that uh, really stuck with me is how do we claim creativity as beyond just painting and playing music and those types of things, but on, but, but speak to the experience of creation in even like, how do we get creative in connection? How do we, when we're thinking creatively, we're opening our brains up to those types of things. I think that, that it's it's like kind of creative energy of the divine, I think works through us. I think back to what um, Isaac was saying about how it's almost like problem solving. It's like there's a, we're, we're connected to something larger. Um, I'm curious for you, as you've been doing more and more of this cooking and doing this experience, if you can just maybe narrate a little bit what, what it's like to start off in the beginning and be like, hey, I'm going to try to do something I've never made before. Somebody else gave me something. I'm going to figure it out. We're going to create it. And th my favorite thing about the creation of, of cooking opposed to other things is you get to eat it. So that's the, that's the positive as well. But just tell me a little bit what that process is like for you and how it's felt in those moments where you are actually doing that cooking. Yeah, it, uh, it's definitely a confidence booster when you don't have major disasters. So for me, I didn't, pre-COVID, I didn't really uh, cook very much and certainly not anything complex. And my version of complex is if something is more than five ingredients, more than five steps, I was just not really engaged. Um, so this was pushing me out outside of my comfort zone too, because some of the, and this is almost like a, like a crowdfunded type of group where it's not just me leading, you know, every other week and, you know, me proposing a recipe. This is the, a group of people in BLC that are coming to the table with something that they want to share. And so we're kind of taking turns and, and learning something new uh, together. Um, so yeah, some of that is, is difficult for me of pushing, you know, beyond that. Um, but it's also, 
um, comforting because you have a, a community, you know that you are literally cooking and preparing some of these things with other people and it just happens to be virtual, but um, that it takes some of that fear away uh, for me of, you know, you know, what if I mess this up? And like, well, it's okay. <laughs> it's like, but other people are there. We can, we can kind of chat and walk through it. Um, but for me, it's, it was a personal thing because, you know, I couldn't go home and have like, you know, my mom's, you know, meals or, you know, my dad making something, I couldn't have that. Um, so sharing, you know, via FaceTime, you know, they'd walk me through the steps and it's never as good as, as theirs, but it's, it's also not a disaster <laughs> too. So, um, you know, I've taken those as little wins of, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm adulting and I'm, <laughs> I'm cooking something, uh, you know, a little bit more challenging today. And, and a lot of actually a couple of the rep recipes that we keep that I just keep doing because they're, um, they've kind of got the hang of them and now I do that more, uh, more often. So, um, but yeah, it's more of the, the space and being able to create the, the connections with people and over a meal. So um, that's what, you know, being an introvert myself, uh, you, you think that I'd have a, a good time being in quarantine, but you know, not being able to have the connections on my terms. Um, yeah, that was a bummer. So you know, not having a meal and not going out for drinks uh, with friends was uh, something I wanted to recreate. Um, and even if it was virtual, so. I love that. Thanks, Maria. I, you know, it makes me think about uh, what we're talking about nerdery with Rebecca. And I think honestly, what nerdery is, is often just uh, passion in other places. It just depends on what we've decided is cool and not cool. Like you think about like a real like beer connoisseur, that is an incredibly nerdy thing from certain, like the, like getting into the different flavor palette, cooking like foodies, being a foodie if in the right lens is an incredibly nerdy thing. Um, this like, uh, the, it's about caring. And I think that part, uh, you know, Vince and I were talking a few weeks back about what emotions or what places internally set us up to experience God. Um, and I think it's not all, and I think that w what the ones that really do put us in the place of God are ones that are full of life and passion. Sometimes that's anger. Sometimes that's sadness. It's those moments where we are letting ourselves be moved, which is like, I always think about like, what is the thing in life I wanna lean into is the stuff that people would make fun of me for in middle school. It's caring too much. Like that's what I think that the Holy Spirit lives in, in the middle school dance floor, I think in some ways. But on the other end, the things that I think block our connection from God and block this sense of, of life are, are the things that have more to do with apathy, more to do with being kind of reserved and pulled in. Um, and I like that for you, like it's just, it's not just the art of creation, it's the art of stepping out as an introvert into connection with the world around us. Um, I just really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Maria, for, for just chatting with us and talking to us as a, as a mother non-creative person, helping me see and seize the creativity in our world around me. Thank you. Um, before we move on and just kind of close this up, I'd love to bring Jen in. Jen, is there anything in the chats as people have been pulling up any cool ideas or things popping up or consensus or your own thoughts that you want to bring into this conversation? Yeah, there is so much. Um, Vivian just said something um, really great um, about how being a receiver of creativity is big. Um, so I think, you know, maybe not all of us are um, inclined to, um, you know, as Beth mentioned, she said cooking, cooking uh, stresses her out. So it's not a healing art for her, but maybe receiving a meal from, from someone or, um, you know, watching a movie, a film with people or um, enjoying, you know, playing Dungeons and Dragons together, like participating in the art, um, in, in some sort of art and creating that connection um, and receiving. Um, that can, you're, you're helping bring life to the creation. So that is just as valuable. Um, there's a really great quote Rebecca shared um, from the author John Green about nerds. Uh, nerds are allowed to love stuff, like jump up and down in the chair, can't control yourself, love it. When people uh, call people nerds, mostly what they're saying is you like stuff, which is just not a good insult at all. Like you're too enthusiastic about the miracle of human consciousness. So I think that's totally what we're getting at is like, you know, let's let's be uh, more nerdy, like and lean into, you know, these spaces that allow us to connect with other people, right? Like that's kind of what God is calling us to do. Um, and uh, going back, Abby had something at the beginning that I loved 
um, talking about, um, and this is something I connect to. Um, I was, I, I used to act a lot. It's like kind of the reason I moved to Chicago is to do um, theater. Um, it's how my husband and I met. Um, I've been out of it for probably like six years now. Um, but Abby said something about removing performance from creativity, like the pressure of performance. And uh, I think, I think, so that's sort of a capitalist thing. Maybe like uh, you have to like have this perfect refined product that uh, people can consume in the marketplace um, versus, or as an actor, you have to audition and be perfect and uh, get cast in roles. And that can um, add a lot of stress and negativity to creativity. Um, and uh, Abby talked about removing the pressure of performance, like just playing the piano without some goal, you know, without, needing to be perfect without, um, you know, needing to have this pressure. And I think that um, that's a caveat or maybe like a, a thing to navigate around performance, uh, creativity in general is, and I think that's sort of the impulse we have to make um, uh, uh, hobbies our jobs, which I don't know if is always a good thing, you know, like sometimes it can work out great for people and sometimes it um, removes the reason you loved the thing in the first place. Um, but I think there's something about our culture that wants to buy and sell and commodify um, what you're doing instead of just it being a, a pure act, you know, of creativity. So I hope, uh, yeah, I hope that makes sense. And see that there's a couple more comments coming in. Um, uh, oh, uh, Beth had a great uh, point about as a mother seeing their kids mm -hmm. express their um, express their creativity um can be can be so moving um and that can be just as connecting to god i think that is so true i love seeing um my nieces and nephews and my friends kids like draw and like everything they do is amazing i'm like wow you are amazing and just like imaginative seeing kids do imaginative play is like really cool um as, uh, you know we don't my husband and i don't have kids but we love like playing with our kid friends, you know, and seeing the worlds they create. And it's always just amazing. Um, that's a lot. So I'm going to, I'm going to peace out here, but um, this has been <laughs> no, that's awesome. Jen. I often feel like a good uh, thing for us in our life is to think, are we, are we cultivating the same spaces in our own life to grow as we cultivate for our children? Um, my kids, love drawing and painting but it's usually because i've cultivated a time that hey we're gonna do here's some stuff to draw and paint uh my kids love playing and singing along to music it's usually because i'm cultivating space and time in their life where that's the thing we're doing and then every once in a while they're asking for it too but i think part of where i want to leave us here today is with two things first i would love to pray over us in a moment for us to all see the places in our life that we are being creative and not calling those frivolous. I think I go to me out of that quote really stuck with me to go back to John Seals of saying, my art is not a distraction or entertainment. It is my way through. And to see those little things we do and claim those as full of God. Um, but the second thing I, I wanna encourage us all in action this week. I want us all to do something creative, to prioritize creating something and then share it on, on Discord with us, share it with other people so that we can kind of see what it is. Um, and just to help us think about what that is, that could be uh, music, writing or playing a song, that could be painting, that could be writing a short story, that could be creating a, a game or a obstacle course for your kids. This could be cooking, this could be creating uh, a, a game to play with your friends. This is really anything in the world of creation, anything that's tapping into this didn't exist and now it does. Um, and then to share that with us, both as accountability to ourselves to realize cultivating the time and space to do this is how it happens and as a way to celebrate and give ideas to other people of what this looks like for each other. Well, I'm gonna pray if you would like to pray alongside me. Jesus, we are so thankful, so thankful for the way uh, we are made and wired that in the act of creation, we are brought life and hope. We are brought into the deeper and fuller. And Lord, I pray against any narratives that those things are superfluous, those things are extra, are the unnecessary parts of life 
because we can't profit off of it or we can't uh, sell it or we can't uh, perform it for other people. And Lord, I just pray that you would you would breathe extra life in this season through our moments of creation. And I pray for inspiration for everybody on this call right now that wants to step into this, a picture of what does creation look like for me? And what is one small step this week I can do to create space to cultivate that, knowing that creation is life-giving? Pray that in your name. Amen. Amen. Boy, that was, what a, what a gift of a service this was. Thank you, uh, Isaac and Rebecca and Maria and Kyle. That was awesome. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll echo the encouragement of use uh, Discord, uh, our, our online community tool uh, to share what is, what is creative in, in your life. Let's say that we'll use uh, the Hope Fuel channel. That's what we started that uh, a while back. So if you wanna share something that's uh, making, uh, been your outlet for creativity, let's use the Hope Fuel channel. Uh, you guys rock. Thank you. That was so fun and and so interesting and like totally got me thinking about like, yes, these are avenues to God's spirit that like are right there for me. Um, man, just, I mean, claiming more things as creativity in my life that I'm doing already, uh, that just feels good for me. It feels like th those things are spiritual and those things are creative and that is good for my heart. Uh, well, let me give a few more shout outs before we're done uh, to Trey Fratt for running our visuals for today so we can follow along and uh, see all the wonderful things that people are sharing. Uh, we uh, appreciate you, Trey. Uh, and for Jen, for being our moderator today and helping us uh, with the discussion today. That was awesome. Uh, and then to L'Oreal for praying for us uh, as we got going this morning. We appreciate all of you. Uh, if you are newer with us or you're not sure that we have your contact information, uh, we're going to drop a link in the chat right now. Uh, we would love for you to follow this link and let us know that you connected with us today. Uh, we'll follow up with you and uh, we would love to grab virtual coffee or tea with you or uh, connect you with a small group and uh, help you connect with other people in this community. That is still possible, even though everything is virtual right now. Uh, if you are a regular with us and you have a prayer request or you have a need or you want to connect over coffee or tea virtually, you can tell us really quickly with our uh, Sunday check-in uh, link. Take you less than 30 seconds to fill that out and we'll follow up with you. The best ways to stay connected with our community right now are small groups. Uh, many are happening online. Uh, and so whether you're joining us from Chicago or somewhere else, you can participate in those. Uh, if you're not already connected to a group, you can tell us that you want to be. And again, we'll follow up with you and, and, and get you connected. There's our Discord online community, which is another really, really great way to stay connected, as we mentioned. Uh, there, uh, there is our um, uh, previous services. Uh, you can follow uh, if you missed them on YouTube or on our podcast. We've dropped the links in there for you. And there's also our email newsletter that goes out weekly that we can get you on if you're not already on it, or our uh, Facebook and Instagram feeds where if you're wondering what's happening uh, for Sundays, you can always find out there. If you are in financial need due to COVID-19, the church can help you bridge a gap. And we have been able to help a number of people this way. Uh, all you have to do is fill out the link that we're dropping in right now, which is brownlinechurch.com org slash need. This is a totally confidential form that only our pastoral staff sees. And uh, if we can help uh, in, in a situation, we want to be able to. So let us know. Uh, this church is crowdfunded, so we want to say thank you as we do every week to everybody who uh, has donated to uh, support uh, the ministry of this church and uh, the pastors and what we're able to do and the community we're able to facilitate. We are so, so grateful. If you are somebody who gives in a recurring way, we are especially grateful uh, because recurring gifts help us to plan and budget. Um, we'll give you a little financial update here uh, as we look back in previous months. December, uh, we've mentioned a couple times, was an extremely generous month. Lots of extra end-of-year gifts, and so we were really, really uh, still kind of basking in the glow of a really, really generous month. Thank you all who uh, participated in that. Uh, January, uh, we just closed the books on, which was a, a very good month for us. Normally, we take in between nine and ten thousand uh, dollars a month, and uh, and so January was a was a, a little bit more than our our normal. So we're grateful for that. And uh, in in the next uh, five years, our plan as a church is to double our current monthly income so that we can expand our ability to pastor more representatively, hiring a woman and a person of color on permanent pastoral staff. 
All right. Uh, we let's see for an announcement today, Kyle. Do we uh, are we doing um, your sure. uh, Bible group reading today? Let's roll. Yeah. So if you missed us last week, you're still welcome to join us. We're doing a Bible study group where every other week we're talking about a new section of the Bible and and kind of wrestling with that together. Uh, right now we're walking through the first 11 chapters of Genesis. So uh, last week we did kind of the creation narrative. And this next week um, on the but on Valentine's Day, interesting, we'll be uh, talking about Adam and Eve, uh, Genesis 2, 4 through 3. And if you want to find some space for reading, we'll hang out after the service today or on the off weeks. Uh, well, we're just going to hang out and we can do the readings together if you need some support, accountability or whatever, just to make sure that we're reading through the passages ahead of time. Um, so after church today, hang around if you'd like to, and we'll read uh, Genesis 2, 4 through 3 together. Um, and then next week, please stay after the service for our discussion and conversation from that. Very good. Thanks, Kyle. And uh, one last announcement. We're looking ahead. Uh, the season of Lent in the church calendar begins in just a couple of weeks. Ash Wednesday uh, is the first day of the 40 days that lead up to Good Friday and Easter Sunday, and that is February 17th this year. Uh, as we've done uh, a few years uh, previous, we are going to uh, be hosting on our podcast feed where we put uh, the recordings of the messages from Sundays a, a daily prayer guide for Lent. We're really excited about this. Uh, L'Oreal, our communications intern, has done a lot of uh, work and is kind of continually working to uh, prepare this for us so that we're going to have daily uh, guided prayers uh, that uh, were recorded by uh, Kyle, by myself, and by Haley, our pastoral intern. Uh, we think that this is going to be really good and just a so often finding the space to slow down and try a meditation or a prayer is difficult. And our thought behind this is carving out three to four minutes is extremely beneficial. And so all of these prayer guides are only going to be at, at most like four or five minutes. They're, they're all going to be shorter than that. And so uh, so we encourage you to, uh, to think about if you're not already subscribed to our podcast to like check out old uh, talks, to subscribe to our podcast. It's on Apple, it's on Spotify, wherever you want to get your uh, uh, podcast or how, however you listen. Uh, but that will be a way that you can kind of work uh, a little bit of prayer into uh, your day starting on February 17th and then running all the way through Easter Sunday. Okay, uh, Kyle, would you uh, take us into communion and then we'll sing one more song together as a prayer. Yeah, uh, we do this each week together to acknowledge two things. One, uh, that we need help in life. We, we need help that we can't just give ourselves. And so we pause and we look to Jesus uh, for that help. The cup symbolizing his bloodshed, the bread symbolizing his body broken, uh, not as a acknowledgement that God is really angry and unhappy with us and through violence decided that he was okay, but rather we have a God who has suffered, a God who has walked through uh, all of the pain and heartbreak and betrayal um, and violence that we as humans so often uh, experience and the cycles that we so often perpetrate. Um, so we look to Jesus for help to find healing, help to find hope, help to find perseverance and connection. And we do so as a community, recognizing we don't do this alone, that God most profoundly and most often shows up through the other people around us who bear his image. Um, so today, as we do this, feel free to go find some kind of food or some kind of drink all over the world. People have used different elements in this time uh, to symbolize this experience. Um, so if you'd like to grab something and participate. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he broke bread, gave thanks, and said, this is my body, which is for you. Whenever you do this, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood shed for you. Whenever you do this, do so in remembrance of me. We do this as a, as a weekly reminder, Jesus, that we need help, that we are imperfect, that we are flawed, that we make mistakes. We have burdens and weights that we cannot carry ourselves. And we look for your help right now, this week, in that. And then we look to each other, both how we may support and care for each other, and then also receive care and support from each other. Lost and weary traveler searching for the 
way to go Stranger Heavy hearted Longing for some One you know May you find a light May you find a light May you find a light to guide you Would you be with us today and be with us this week? May we become good at naming our needs. May we become good at reaching out to those and to you for help. May we be good at meeting and seeing others. And this week, may we feel your presence with us and feel the connection of the community around us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Great to be with you all, and we will see you next Sunday. Awesome. If you are sticking around and want to do the reading together,